Hi, I'm Angela Fair. Here on my YouTube channel, I share with you the tools and techniques you need to be a fearless, confident watercolor artist. Today, we are making a powerful single color watercolor painting using water soluble graphite. If you've never used it, I'm gonna show you what it is and how to use it. Let's get started. Today I'm using Art Graph watercolor graphite. This comes in a little cake in this little metal tin. And I'm using it today to paint uh, a grayscale value study. Um, one I'm going to spend a little more time on. And if, if you're struggling with value in your paintings, if things get too dark too soon, spend time working your value studies, creating value studies, really looking at your images in black and white, and getting to know the light and dark placement in your painting. It's going to make a huge difference. And as, as you study it. The scene I'm painting is one that's really unfamiliar to me. It's uh, architectural, which is a challenge for me as an artist because it's just not something I paint very often. So we're going to start by just laying in those major shapes that I'm seeing and then we'll build up our values from there. And getting all these angles right is a bit of a challenge. We're going to just approximate it. Watercolor graphite tends to hold still once it's started to set into the paper, but you, uh, in those early washes you can create some flow and some texture, which is nice. It's a good idea to look where the top of that shape is. We have a shape coming out here, there, something like that. If you don't have watercolor graphite, I would suggest trying just a single color of watercolor. I like Payne's Gray for value studies. and. It dilute. It goes really dark and it dilutes also to it a really nice pale blue. It's usually more of a blue. And we've got that angel which kind of comes out from here. Again, angles help here. Whenever I'm painting those first layers, I look for ways to keep things very soft. I try not to have a lot of crisp edges um, before I know where everything's going to be placed in my painting. This is your chance to establish those major shapes while still leaving things open-ended enough to give you room to make changes. Tweak it a little bit. We, in painting a scene that's predominantly gray in a single color, really get that chance to force ourselves to observe values we don't have a choice. And so we can see where the light falls on the angel and provides those strong or those lighter value areas which are contrasted by the very dark values as well. And we have really our darkest values in the lower half of that figure. And then fading out from there. One thing I like about this watercolor graphite is it really does um, have some really nice texture to it. We get some great granulation. 
as we add water and let it flow. And you can see how those adding those darks right now just made my painting uh, create some form. It really, it was just a bunch of angles before, but having those darks added in gives me that form that starts to give you some depths, help you to understand what everything, what you're seeing and what's near and what's distant in the scene. At this stage, you want to keep them simple and look for those major shapes of the darks. Oops. In painting architecture, uh, it's especially helpful to pay attention to the shapes, uh, the, how they relate to each other. When you can study how angles connect, it makes it easier to get those angles correct. We have a lot of opacity in the graphite at this stage. Uh, when you're using it fairly thick like this, you can really see through it. Or you can really see that it's thick enough to not be seen through here. Here the light of the water or the paper is still shining through. Nothing is, none of my words are working today. We also have our lightest values both in the sky and then also along the bottom of the painting here. I think sometimes you might think you need to paint architecture with a, with a flat brush because uh, it makes maybe straighter lines or it just feels like it has a similar shape to a lot of the shapes you're seeing in an architectural uh, object. But I like a round brush. As you can see, I can use the point of my brush to draw my lines and the flat of the brush, the side of the brush, to pull out and fill areas of color. I'm going to pull over right over top of my angel right now just because I want to correct my angles here on the roof and I don't want to have white gaps around the figure. Some of the graphite has dried enough that it really doesn't move once it's dry. Can't budge it. Look at how white this area looks. In comparison to the, you know, it's it's really not as white as that in the photo, and it stands out and competes with the sky. So we're just going to put a thin glaze of graphite over that. So well, to tone it back. And we're also going to darken our darkest darks as well. That generally tends to be a building up kind of stages process. You don't, usually you cannot get your darkest darks in just one layer if you're wanting to have some near blacks in your painting. It tends to have to go back and forth a little bit. Now the trick here is that we do need to think about how detailed we want to get and that is always tough because in our reference photo we see all the details 
So we have to decide how much of that we're going to stick to and what we want to let go of. And I don't want to paint every bump and curve and cranny. So I have to look for my simplifications. Let's put in those strong contrasts against the sky. That's going to help our image come together. I'm really having a hard time seeing that one angle. I think it's something like that. couple things you want to be aware of as you start to work on the details and build up at your value study and this is more of a painting than a study and just that I'm spending more time on it than I often do when I'm talking about value studies often we're just sketching and it's taking two minutes or less in this case we're taking more time because we want to build our skills at being able to see value and we're working a little larger which also makes makes things take longer and it's part of our training to learn how to see. Let's place those darks in the angel's figure. So we want to, when you, when you think about where to go next and what to do next, always look at your focal point first, your areas of strongest contrast and impact because those are the, the areas you need to make sure to emphasize if you want your painting to be successful. And if those are working, everything else can be simplified. darks to add in around our angel. Um, let's see if I can do those eyes. They're a little bit intimidating. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you that there's parts of this painting that make me nervous, but when it comes to painting values, you want to look for those shapes. Don't be intimidated because, oh, this is the angel part, and now it's, I'm talking to myself now. Um, this is the angel, and now it's going to be the hardest part, and et cetera. It's really just seeing the values, and I've oversimplified there. We've got a little bit of kind of a mid-tone shadow in there. Add it with a little less water so it doesn't get blotchy. I didn't get all my shape relationships perfect. I think her arm ended up getting a little bit low. So I kind of have to improvise a little bit here to make it work. And that's kind of the problem solving issues of a painting. Most of the time you're gonna have an area that's not quite right and you get to be a master of camouflage and disguise to make it come together and that is I think pretty much universal among artists it doesn't mean you're a failure it just means you have to be a good trickster a good magician in showing helping the viewer to focus on the areas that are strong and distracting from the areas that are maybe not quite so powerful um, 
but I really am seeing the angel coming forward there, which I like. I'm happy with that. So let's see if we can wind down on this study a little bit. Just moving to those finishing details, darkening again, looking for those darkest darks, contrasting with our angel. I think I'm going to try to do a little bit more texture, some of those um, corrugated ridges in the, in the roof here. Whenever you're painting parallel lines, you want to make sure they line up with each other more than that they match the photo. Make sure they match what you've already painted. I'm going to soften slightly. I don't really want crisp lines there. I want that overall feeling of kind of a soft atmospheric sketch. Um, over here we have some of those ridges where they end. There's a little bit of contrast. We'll place that. Let's see how those crisp lines up there are just too Pushy, they kind of just a little too bossy. Soften those. With value relationships, we're not just looking at those lines and how they meet, but where a dark touches a similar dark, there's going to be less contrast. So you want to make sure that we have areas where the contrast is strong. That's the areas where your eye goes. And the areas where there's less contrast tend to disappear into the background. So I've really taken my time with this. Uh, there's always that decision of how much more do you want to do. And I, because again, it's a study, I'm really just working to build my skills in painting architectural subjects, painting something that's a little out of my comfort zone, and by simplifying it down to focus on a single color, so I'm only painting the values, it really helps me to exercise my problem solving abilities. It really helps me to focus on the values which create those contrasts and impacts in my painting. As I pull back, uh, I can see areas that maybe need more contrast and I can go back in and darken those up. I can't grow lighter anywhere. So it's really, if it, if it comes to needing more contrast, all you can do is add those richer darks. And that means you want to make sure you keep those light values from the very beginning. If you start to lose your lights, your painting is going to get just darker and darker. The strong impact that happens with white against very dark is just lost. I'm enjoying using watercolor graphite uh, because of the texture it creates, there's some really pretty textural areas here where the color's been allowed to run. Placing those brush strokes and then blending them out gives me that, uh, and it's really quite pretty. A few takeaways for you. The reason we do value studies is because we can really struggle with seeing value when we're thinking of color only. Choosing a subject that's really just one color like I have and choosing to work in a single color can help you to 
build your ability to train your eye to see those values and focus on those first of all. Yes, color is important and the colors you choose do make an impact on your painting, but if you haven't paid attention to impactful values, strong contrasts of light and dark, especially around your focal point, you're really gonna struggle to make your paintings look interesting and dynamic and to keep those whites. And if you've been hearing people say, watercolorists need to keep the white, some white in their paper. Learning to see value is a really helpful way to strengthen your ability to do that. Something that can really help you understand values a little bit more is editing your photo just a little bit to make it simplified, to push those contrasts and get it down to white, middle value, and darkest value. We're out of time for today. There's so much more we could say on values. So I'm adding some content to the description below, resources that will help you to think more confidently about values, to be able to see them better and paint with more dynamic contrasts in your paintings. All of this will make you a better painter and give your paintings that uh, unmissable kind of appeal, even from across the room. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate all your support and it helps me make better videos uh, when you're engaged and commenting here on my videos. So thank you for that. Have a great day and keep painting.